называется у Татьяна э, Семирог, э, Медведев Семирог. Э, Татьяна из... Э, э, She came to America in 1988. She is an ent entrepreneur, an inventor, a photographer, and she is a widowed mother of three little girls. So she has a lot on her plate, and she also runs uh, for state representative for 6 Plymouth district. Tatiana. Здравствуйте. Hello. Hola. Alguien aquí de Venezuela? Muchas gracias. Здравствуйте, дорогие все наши um, former survivors, I guess, of the former Soviet Union. My name is Tatiana Samirog, and I'm running to be uh, a state representative in the 6th Plymouth District against a very radical leftist that I hope to beat and have a very good chance of beating. Yay! But let me tell you a little bit about myself. I come from a little town of Nakhodka, which is by Vladivostok, which is uh, in the very far edge of the world, as I like to call it, the far east of Russia. My summers were spent swimming in the Sea of Japan. Literally, Japan was just below us. So um, I had a pretty good childhood until I started learning about uh, what it meant living in, in a socialist, communist country. It meant that my great-grandfather, Afanasi Raylan, may his memory be eternal, was persecuted so severely by the Stalinist regime, by many that came afterwards, all because of his faith in God. They raided his home and they found a Bible and because he refused to be a communist and continued to have faith in God and preach the word of God. He and his brothers were committed to be executed. His brothers were executed on the spot while he was giving 40 days in a Kamera Smirnikov, which is death, de death chamber. He awaited 40 days for his name to be called while being there many, uh, with many others. And every morning, the door would open, and it, he awaited his name, but it wouldn't be called, it would be someone else's name. Forty days like this. When his name was finally called, he couldn't find the door, the exit, because of the sheer stress of what he's lived through. Instead of being executed, he was given 20 years in the gulags in Siberia, in labor camps. Now, meanwhile, his wife and seven children were kicked out of their communal living and left to roam the streets. They built a zimlanka, which is a bunker, by a river and lived in there for seven years. Four children died of malnutrition. As a little girl, Learning these things directly from my grandmother was heartbreaking. But at the same time, when my father told me, when I reached first grade, he said to never ever put the star of Lenin on my lapel in school. I understood why. And I was proud to not put Leninska Zvezdochka, the Lenin star. Later on, I had to, we had to wear the, as you remember, the red scarves around our necks. I did not put one on either. Neither did my brothers. It drove my teacher insane, poor Irina Nikolaevna. But another teacher who was my brother's teacher, she would literally call up my brother to Linyeka, the line of the class and in front of everybody would just start beating them for not wearing the communist Lenin star. So while I did not survive the gulags, nor did my father, my great grandfather did, thank God, but I felt suppressed, oppressed and persecuted while living as a 10-year-old girl in Russia. 
And when the opportunity came in 1988, during Perestroika, for a lot of the Jewish people to be let out, my community of Protestant Christians in my little town of Nechotka petitioned President Reagan to be signed on to the same Lautenberg Amendment. And thank God that that was done. We went through Vienna, and then we went to Italy, and from there we came to Massachusetts. Now, on to this beautiful state that I'd love to talk to you about. This state is the cradle of liberty, not just for the pilgrims who came here many, many years ago, but for people like me and people like you. This is where my American dream was born, in Springfield, Massachusetts. Yes, we did live in a basement of a church, but it was better than living in the communal, communal living in Russia until we did get a, an apartment. We came here with nothing, with nothing. We were nobodies, we were refugees. But we received the greatest gift, and that gift is the pursuit of happiness and the American dream. And let me tell you, we are the lucky ones. There are so many ones who stayed behind. So many people who want to come here and take advantage of the same American dream, but they can't. Why are we better than them? How did we come here? How were we chosen? I don't know. But the destiny is looking at us now because now we have a unique opportunity, don't we? Knowing what we survived, knowing what we left behind, we are now given a choice to continue living the quiet lives that we came to live here, wanting to be left alone by the government, wanting to pursue our dream, or to stand up and say, hold on, this American dream is now being threatened. Our freedoms are being chipped away little by little, especially in this beautiful state. While we have been quiet and silent, free to do, to raise our children, to work, to pursue our dreams, the left, the radical left, has been very active. And look at what they've turned this beautiful state into. Look at the kind of legislature that they're passing right behind me at the beautiful state house. I am hoping to change all of that. And I'm asking everyone who has survived what I have survived to stand up and say, not this time. The Nazi Germany and the Bolshevik regimes that overtook uh, our countries did so because all of this leads to. We have been there. We have seen the suffering. We have overcome tremendous odds and survived. And we don't want to see this again on the beautiful shores of America. We have that choice today. And I hope we all choose to be loud, even louder than the violent leftists are. They are very loud. They, you know why they're loud? Because they're filled with hate, with hate and fear. And that is why they're loud, and that is why they're violent. But we need to be louder. And what needs to drive us is love, love for this country to give back to this beautiful country that gave us everything. Every single dollar that you have earned in this country is a dollar way more than what, you, what we could have earned back home. America gave us that. And what are we gonna do now to say thank you? How are we gonna give back? I urge you and call upon all of you to unite. We have a unique perspective and America is blessed to have us. We have to be active, we have to be organized, we have to be united, and we have to be loud with love, all right? Um, please check me out, my campaign. I have some literature that I could give uh, about, it's here, right? Yeah, here it is. I, I'll give, I have plenty of these to give out. Uh, see my 
my web address here. If you want to get involved in any way uh, and help me, please do so. Um, any donation, any volunteer opportunities, we have to become active to give back to this beautiful country. I'm a widow with three little girls, but I couldn't sit anymore. I just couldn't, because I knew what it means to, to remain silent. I knew what's coming. I know what's behind those doors of radical leftism. And that is why I'm standing up. And I hope uh, to rally all of you to stand up with me and protect this amazing country, this beautiful state of Massachusetts. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.